All right, welcome back to part two of our video on Honda charging systems. This time we're going to go through and we're going to show a test procedure for the components that we can test. Uh, it's going to require one simple tool, which is a DVOM or digital volt ohm meter. Uh, this one's just a very basic one, does the job. Two things to keep in mind. One, make sure it has a strong battery in it. Second, make sure it is accurate. Uh, we're going to check really quickly just to show this battery just came off the charger. It's holding a surface charge right now of about 12.8 volts. So we know we're in good shape there with the meter itself in accuracy. Uh, what we're going to do is set down to the 200 scale on the ohm readings and we're going to check these rotors. Now it's a common thought that the rotors don't fail and the stators do in these charging systems. Uh, however, we've seen a lot of failures on these rotors. Um, 4.2 to about 5 ohms is the correct reading on one of these uh, rotors measured between the slip rings on a cold rotor. Um, that means cold, stone cold, engine has not been run, removed from the bike is preferable, but it doesn't really matter either way. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go across these two slip rings with our contacts. Right now we're showing 1.3 ohms, which means we are shorted to ground somewhere inside of this. Uh, we're going to move to our next one, and we're going to check it. Here we have 1.1 ohms, again, probably a short to ground. Our third one, 2.2 ohms, slightly better, but again, not in the 4.2 to 5.0 ohm range. Lastly, we're dealing with 1.0 to 0.9 ohms, um, again, not acceptable at all. Now, none of these are shorted to the case themselves that we can see, uh, but again, maybe uh, opening the windings or something of that nature. Now, what also happens with these is many times you put them in at this, in this state, they will charge for a short time until the bike heats up, then they drop out and they stop charging, um, usually once the engine reaches operating temperature. So, there's an example of four, sta uh, four rotors that are dead. Um, so, that's just four that were laying around this shop. Now, we move on to the stator itself. Uh, the stator, there's only one check for that. Basically what we're looking for in this case is continuity between the, any of the three wires. does not matter what the resistance reading is and we want to make sure that there's no short to the case itself. So essentially what we're going to do is jump across these wires here and we should just see continuity. Again, the reading is not as critical. and between these three we're fine there. Now we're also going to just check over to the case. One, two, three. We have no continuity there. That means that this stator should be in working order. Um, this one is a used one in fact. This is a brand new stator. Same thing and actually a brand new stator shows the exact same almost readings. Just slightly less resistance probably because it hasn't had as much exposure to heat yet. Um, again, not an issue. Same thing, and we want to make sure that there's no continuity to ground, which there is not on any of the three leads. Lastly, we can check the brushes. They're a very simple test. Again, being sure that they're not broken, being sure that they're not worn beyond the scribe line here for wear, and then we just want to check them to see if they have continuity from the screw terminals through the brushes. We have continuity on one, we have continuity on the other. So we know that they're good. So that's the way to test this system. Once these components are installed, we want to check battery voltage uh, while idling and at uh, 2,000, 3,000, and 4,000 RPM for proper output. That will verify that the system is working properly.